Okay, here's two of my Colts that I have. Um, I got a few more here and there, but I just wanted to show you some takedown on these and some differences. Uh, this particular Colt is called a Police Positive 32, 32 Smith & Wesson Long. And they could also take 32 short cartridges. This particular um, Colt pistol was made around 1915. Um, it's not in that good a shape. I mean, it still functions 90%. Uh, it will shoot, but the finish is completely worn off. And what I did, I started grinding it with a wire wheel. Um, what I'm going to do is just re-blue this myself and get a little bit better than, you know, cosmetically and, and functioning correctly. Uh, the timing's just slightly off. And what I mean by that is, if you could see, see the cylinder, the cylinder's a little loose. But some of these older Colts, they do have a little wobble into them. But the best way to test this is that uh, when you pull back the uh, hammer like this, you can see it tightens up a little bit. And now, of course, the main test is when you're pulling the trigger. So I'm holding the hammer back and also pulling the trigger at the same time. And you can see it's pretty well locked up. So now I'm putting pressure on the trigger and letting the hammer go. And that's when it would engage into the bullet um, onto the primer. So this gun is still functional. Now, if you do have a, an older Colt that the timing doesn't quite match, you know, the um, grooves on the cylinder here uh, and say it's only halfway to the barrel, well, I would highly recommend I'm not shooting that, of course, because you could hurt yourself and blow the gun up. But this one just needs a little work. It is the barrel stop right here. This is actually called a bolt. Also, uh, that little piece right there that pops up with a spring right here. So, so if you look when I pull the, see how it goes down inside of the frame and then it pops up again. Well, what it is, it is worn, which is number one, because these things, you know, a lot of these Colt police positives, they were used and a lot of wear into them. And also it needs a new spring. So the spring is not as strong as it was. So here we go, watch. Still does its job, but it's not quite uh, lining itself correctly into the cylinder groove here, right there. So that, let's do this. See, I can even move this, see? I could just move that back and that should be locked right now. So if you could see the bolt right there, the cylinder stop, watch. It actually is not lining. See if I have to move it. See, I, I moved it slightly. And you can see the wobble to it. It should go up farther into the little groove there. And that's one of the problems with these older Colts. So let me let me go to the next. This is a neat one. This one's in nice shape, but you see the see a little wobble to it. This one is a Colt Police Positive 38, and it's basically the same thing, a little larger frame, of course, because of the 38. And the, the Colt 38 was a nice caliber, but this is almost identical. Even has the identical grips, as you could see. Okay, now this one, of course, has the same cylinder stop. Now watch this. Let's push it down. That pops right up. That's that's really quick popping up. See, I'm not even pulling it back a hair. See how that popped up, and the snap was even nice, and it feels good too. The spring feels really nice and solid. So if I See, I can't even move that cylinder. See how nice and locked that is? Even though it's wobbling a little bit. But they all have play. Maybe not a lot of play like that, but they uh, most of them have play. Now, the test again is pull that back and look how tight that is. I can't even move that cylinder. I'm pushing my finger on the trigger, holding the hammer at the same time, and pushing it forward. 
and that is super, super tight. I mean, that's amazing. Look how tight that is. Okay, so this one is actually really nice. It even has a lot of the blue left. Has the nitrite screws, as you can see, it's like a shiny blue. And uh, even the nitrite screws on there. Like I said, it has the same grips. Okay, now one thing about this, the Colt emblem, I don't know if you could see it. Let me see if I could. The emblem is the rampant horse, but with like a C wrapped around it. Since this is 1905, they only made these for so long. Okay. Now, if you look at the 1915 Colt, see the emblem on there? It doesn't have the C. So that's what's different also about this one. But this is a really nice, it feels good in your hand. Uh, I do like the grips. I mean, I have small hands and the 38 is actually really nice and it's just solid. Now again, if I pick this one up, pull that back, now I'm gonna push the trigger. See this slight wobble to it? See that? And the other one is really hard. The, the cylinder does not move at all. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do is show you how to remove all this and if you want to replace some parts or if you want to clean it inside and oil it. Uh, first thing you do is you take this screw out from your grips. Just get the correct screwdrivers so you don't strip any uh, nuts or bolts, I mean. Okay. And then here's the taking the grips out. Now get a little box like I have, put all the parts in there. Let's get this out of here. Okay, I put all my screwdrivers there. So there you see the main spring. Okay. Now the second thing you want to do is take the cylinder. Um, remove that with these two screws. Now one of them has an indentation in it, so they come out the same time. Again, get the right screwdriver. Okay. Start loosening it up. Now as this screw loosens up, this pin on the right side will start to rise because it has like a little washer on the screw that actually kind of indents into the pin. And when you put this back, make sure they go in the same time before you screw it in. So I'm gonna unscrew the screw now. And then they just pop out. Say so there's the there's the screw. And the pin. See, the pin should have popped out at the same time, but I didn't get it at the same time. So just kind of pry it up in there. And then here's the uh, the secure bolt or the pin that, that secures the uh, cylinder and the shaft in there. Or the uh, crane, I'm sorry. So make sure you take these little screws and pin, put them in the box so you know where they're at. You can also take pictures of this before and after. So, I mean, that's not a big deal to take a picture. So now remove the cylinder and the crane. After you remove those, just push it out. See how I'm pushing it out? Kind of wiggle it a little bit, it comes right out. So even when you want to install it back, you might have to just wiggle it back in there. And see, it goes right in there. So take your thumb, release, pull out, and then push out. Okay, so there you go. There's that one. Okay, now we want to take this plate off, the side plate with these two screws. So make sure if they're rusted in there or whatever, make sure you put some oil on there and let it soak for a couple hours or even overnight. Um, and then I'm going to take these two screws out. Okay, I had this apart before, so... That's why they're pretty easy. And once you get it all oiled up and cleaned, you know, it's an easy job to clean it again or take it off. Okay, now I took the two screws off here. So what you want to do is take a bigger screwdriver. Be very careful. Now since this is on a spring, the thumb release, what you want to do is just come back here and just pry up here just a little bit and just start to get that up. Okay. And then since that's up a little bit right there off the frame, just kind of wiggle it. Maybe have to pry it again. There you go. And it just comes right out. See that? 
So there's your parts there, okay? And what you do is your thumb release right here just slides completely off, just by hand, boom, like that. Now there is a little spring right there. See that little spring? Sometimes that will fall out, so be careful. Be careful, you know, when you watch that. This one right here is actually securely in there. I couldn't even get it out, and I, I didn't pull too hard with a, um, um, a, a, pl a nose pliers, but I, it's, it's in good shape, so I, I just left it in there. So when you want to put it back, there's actually a little groove here on the thumb release, and it just kind of slides right in there, see? And there's your spring action for your thumb release. So very simple, very simple. Now your cylinder bolt is right here. See that cylinder bolt? That moves. So see how I'm moving that down and up? So when you install it, make sure it's kind of out. It just, there's no spring in there. Just kind of make sure it's straight up and down before you install it. Put this back and then you're gonna have to line it up somewhat kind of wiggle it around a little bit, kind of push this, you know, so you could get it over that that bolt and then snap this plate in and you'll be fine. You might just have to do it a couple times, but it's real easy. It's not hard to do. All right, there's your mainspring. There's your cylinder catch, um, you know, um, uh, what the hell they call it? I forgot, I'm sorry. Uh, there's your hammer. Here's your rebound spring right here. Here's your trigger. Okay. Now what you want to do first is take the cylinder latch movement off. Um, and what you do is... Oh, I'm sorry. No. First thing you want to do, my fault, is take the main spring off because you want to relieve this tension. Sorry about that. So the easiest thing I do is I just take this here, the screwdriver, and just pull the spring up and hold my thumb so it doesn't fly in my face. So I just get up here, or you could just push it up on the bottom a little bit. Um, it does have a little hole. See that little hole right there? There's a little indent, indent uh, tip on this spring that goes into that hole. So if it's really rusted, you might have to work with it a little bit. But I just use a screwdriver and see how I, it just comes right up like that. So it's out of the frame. And then what I do is just undo it like this, kind of jiggle it around, bring that down, and then there's you go. There you go. So that's the main spring. Put that in the box so you don't lose it. All right, so I don't have any tension on this now except the uh, rebound spring. So what you do now is you grab this part here, hold this together, okay? And there's your cylinder latch right there. That just pops right out and again there's a hole right on the trigger that it goes into see the hole right there it's right there and then your rebound spring right here make sure it's above that hole kind of hold it with your thumb when you install it back and just push it on the hole like that so how it's against that edge right there see so that's actually ready to go back if I wanted to go back. So let's take this part out. Again, now it has some wear right there. See the wear? I don't know if that was done by the factory or what, but it looks like wear to me. So I'm going to replace this. And it even has the, the little uh, part right here. It seems like it's on an angle. Again, I don't know if that was done at the factory, but I think it's wear. So I'm going to get a new one of these. They're hard to get, but sometimes you can get new ones for like 20 bucks or a good used one for 10, 20 bucks. So put this in the box, okay? Next thing you wanna do is remove your uh, rebound spring. So the best thing to do, there's a pin right here, okay? And you wanna push this pin through the other side of the uh, grip. So the, great, the, the thing to do, I do, is just get a nail, okay? And there's the pin and just push it through and you see how it came through like that there's the pin so just push it through and you might have to struggle you might have to put on a little vise or something and tap it so then next thing i do is just i get a pair of uh, pliers and i'm holding these parts together with my thumb so just hold them together and just take this pin out 
there pops right out there's the pin and again I'm gonna put the pin in the box okay now that now your rebound spring keep your hold of your trigger and your rebound spring just pops right out so I'm just gonna get a screwdriver see how it just pops right out of there so then I just take it and I just pop it out see that so this side goes towards here goes right up in there and just pops right out so I'm gonna put it in that in the box Next thing I'm going to do is take my uh, hammer off. Hammer just lifts right out. Now here's the part where the spring holds on to. See that there? And that just moves easy. There's no spring. Just goes back and forth. It's attached to your hammer. And that just pops right out. See that? Very easy. So you got your hammer just pops right out of it. So now the other thing, there's a few more parts left. There's your trigger. Okay. And that just pops out. Just grab it. See that? Just pops out. Very easy. Okay. All right. Now your safety, uh, safety levers right here. There's your cylinder bolt right there. So if you want to take your cylinder bolt out, you can take your cylinder bolt out. See your cylinder bolt? That just pops right out. There's no spring on that cylinder bolt. Remember, it's on the uh, side plate with the uh, thumb release. So what makes the cylinder bolt have a spring is this right here. Okay. So next thing you want to do if you want to, I got a lot of oil on this thing. Let me wipe it off a little bit. Okay. Next thing you want to do if you want to take this uh, safety out, uh, you just grab a little screwdriver here and you can take this little safety lever. Pops right out. Okay. And there's your safety lever. And you could put the you could put this part down to exactly where it goes, but once you fiddle with it, you know exactly where it goes. But it's not that hard again. So put it down to how you took it out. And then of course your safety is right here. See the safety lever? And that just pops right out. Yeah. Okay? There's your safety lever. Very simple. Now you could go in here and clean all this. You know, and just uh, use some uh, brake cleaner or kerosene. Leave it in, dip this whole thing in kerosene and then re-oil everything. I got too much oil on this, so. Um, so to put the safety lever back in, you just pop it in like this. See the, the tit side up, whatever, goes up towards you. And it just falls in there. And just push it up, up a little bit. Okay. Oh, oh I forgot the, the bolt here. That's right. So the bolt, you take a small screwdriver. Here's your bolt right here. Okay, the, this is the cylinder bolt or the cylinder latch. And it only has one screw right there. See the screw in the middle? It's real easy to come off. So let's take that off for you. So you just take the screw off. Okay, it's a very small screw, so be careful not losing it. And after you take that off... Almost off. Like I said, it's a very, very tiny screw. There we go. So the screw is still on the uh, safety or on the uh, bolt latch. So again, what you could do, take your screwdriver, lift it up. What I do is take that, kind of bring it, bring it forward a little bit. There you go. And then it just pops out. Right, like that. Now watch that screw, and there's your spring. So this is your cylinder bolt, and there's the spring attached to it, right there, and there's your screw. So if you tip this over, the screw is going to come out. So make sure you be careful not losing that screw because that's going to cost you nine dollars at least to get that screw. The head is actually beat up on this, so I want to replace this bolt because this bolt's worn. It's actually worn, and I think if I replace it and then just file a little bit, it'll do a better job on locking the cylinder up and get a new spring and a new uh, bolt or a screw, I mean. So there's everything out now. You have, you have everything out of this. Now this one is exactly the way this one is, so 
it's just a little bit bigger frame. So now to put it back in, so you want to take your cylinder bolt latch. Okay, you want to, there's a little hole underneath here. So when you put it in, again, the screw's on there, so be careful of that screw. And then just line it up like that. Okay. Make sure you line the uh, screw into the hole. And then take your screwdriver. And just start, start screwing it in. Okay. <clears throat> Screw it in kind of tight, but don't over tighten it. Because, you know, you'll strip it. And then there's your spring. Right in there. Okay. So I'll just move that over into the hole there in that spring. Like that. All right. So that's on there. Your cylinder bolt latch is on there. Okay. So next thing you want to do is take your latch here, your safety latch, and uh, and place it on here just like it was. Goes over that pin. And the safety latch on the on this side has a little titty thing that goes into a little hole. It just sits right on there. So make sure that that's on there like that. Kind of snap it down a little bit. And then just leave that like that. Okay. So you're good on that. So the next thing you want to do is you could put your hammer on. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Your, uh, where is it? Oh, your cylinder bolt. You want to put your cylinder bolt in there. Just slides right in with the big end in and the little end standing up. So just put that in there like that. Okay, and the next thing you want to do is get your hammer, okay, and put your hammer back in. So, just leave your hammer like that, see that, it just snaps right, it just goes right in over that pin, and just kind of, you could, if you want, you could put it halfway like that, which is easier, it's easier for me anyhow. And then you get your trigger, and right here, if you could see... There's a little slot there with a trigger lever on your hammer. So that open slot, this part of the trigger, see that little piece there at the end of the trigger? That goes in that open slot. Open slot. So make sure you put it on the pin first. So I'm putting it on the pin on the frame, and then I'm putting it in the open slot. See that? Now it's in the open slot. So that trigger set. See that? See how that moves that hammer like that without spring tension? Okay, so now what you want to do is get your um, your uh, rebound lever and the flat side, see the, and then you have a side like that. The, that side goes towards here. So put that in there, bring it down to where it lines the pin and hold it right there with your thumb and just kind of bring it down like that. So see how that's resting on the trigger? That, that tip part is just resting on the trigger don't worry about any of this right now just hold it with your thumb so it doesn't move and it's already set in the hole so now i'm going to get my very small pin take it from the underside here put it in and see how i have it started and then take my hammer or my well you could take a hammer or a screwdriver and just tap it in oops it moved hold on There we go. All right, so that's in. So I have the pin in, as you can see, it's flush against this side, the pin, and I have it set in there. So that's all ready to go, okay? So now you wanna take your cylinder latch right here, and you wanna put it in this hole. You wanna bring your trigger to the front. See how the trigger goes to the back of the trigger guard? Pull it towards the front, Make sure your cylinder latch or your rebound latch spring is on above the hole right there. So take that, okay, and put it into the trigger right here, back of the trigger, okay. See how I just did that? It just goes right in. Take your rebound spring. There's no tension on it. Just lift it up a little bit. Move this forward. There. 
and just make sure it goes in that little groove. There's like a little flat surface right here on your cylinder latch and it goes nicely in there and it's nice and flat. So make sure that that's flat. So everything's in there. So here's the back of your hammer and here's where the uh, main spring goes. See how that just kind of goes dang dangles around. All right. So what you want to do is you want to take your main spring and what I do is I just grab it like that and I put, there's, there's like a little hole here in the center. See it? Like a little cut groove. And you want to put it on that piece that dangles. So just make sure it goes correctly on there like that. And then what I do is I take my thumb and I push this bottom spring up. See that? And I bring this down like that. So it's back basically in the frame. So now I want to put it in that hole but see, it's not lined correctly, but it is in back of the trigger lever right there. It's correctly there. You'll see it. And then just kind of play with it and push it down. Push down and forward, and you heard it snap. So it snapped in, and it snapped in that hole. People use pliers and everything. It's like, but, you know, if, you're, if your trigger, uh, if your mainspring is really tough, you might have to use pliers to kind of dangle it around, but... I'm sure this is the original main spring, so it's not as strong. So everything is done, basically, all this. Now watch this, now you wanna test it. So you hold your thumb on the, on the lever, cylinder lever. See how that snaps? Make sure and just keep your thumb on that so this doesn't pop out. Okay. So everything works before you put it all back together now. Okay. Everything works. All right, so you want to take your plate, make sure your spring is in there, right there. Don't forget the spring or it's not going to work. And then put your thumb release back into the plate, okay? And then again, make sure your cylinder bolt is straight up and down towards the front. And then just line it up. Like I said, you might have to play there. There, and that's on, okay? See how easy that was? Very simple, okay? Works, make sure you bring this back so to see the cylinder bolt moving right there. Okay, so, and then you could take your two little screws, put your little screws on that you, that you put in here. What happened to that little screw? Here it is. So I'm gonna put my Two little screws on my cylinder, on my plate on that I put on. Okay. And then just tighten them up. Don't over tighten. I'm just going to snug them for now so I don't lose them. Oops. Oop. And boy, if this was a perfect, uh, first of all, if this was a perfect one, I won't be using a screwdriver like this because I don't want it to slip like I did and scratch. Like, I won't use it on this one. So that one's on, the two screws, the plate's on. You could test it. Works good, doesn't it? The next thing you want to do is put your cylinder in your crane. Make sure you clean it up and oil it a little bit. Put it in there just like that. Clicks in. Boom. Done. Okay. And then with these two screws... There's a little cutout groove in the pin right there. See that little cutout? And then there's like a little washer thing. See that little washer thing on the screw? That little washer thing goes into that cutout. So what you want to do is put that in there like that. And then there's a little cutout on top of the pin that sets the screw in. Because if you didn't have that, this screw would not set into that pin. So I have that together now. Hold it together. Bring this up and then just line it up and drop it in and just kind of push in at the same time. See how I lined it up and I pushed in? And then what you want to do is slowly, don't strip because if it's not screwing in, you're going to strip your screw. So see how I'm screwing in? The pin is going down in at the same time. And if you don't put these two pins in together, it won't work. And then you're just going to fight it and you're going to uh, strip the screw. So there you go. It's in. Okay. See that? And then again, just put your your uh, grips on. 
All right, these are the original grips. And then just tighten the screw up. Like that. Snug it, don't over tighten, just snug it. Okay. There you go, guys. This one needs a little work, like I said, and it's just, uh, it's gonna be like a truck gun. My car gun, actually, because I don't have a truck anymore. And I just, I don't even, see, that shouldn't move like that. I have to fix that and get a new new uh, bolt or a cylinder latch right there. That cylinder latch is worn. So I'll get a few new parts too in there and just put a few new parts in there. Uh, this one is the same takedown. Some are slightly different, so be careful. But this is for your older ones, your pre-1920s police positives. I also have a Colt police positive um, with a snub nose. I got a few of these. I just love them. Oh, almost got my finger. I just love them. I really do. These are great, great Colts. And they're starting to go up in value. These are like anywhere from $250 to $600, depending on the condition. And they even go up more than that. Uh, if they're immaculate in the box and everything. I mean, the box alone is worth 300 bucks, you know? So, well, I hope you learned something. Take your time, and you'll do it right. There you go. And then, like I said, this one I love. This is the 38. This is really solid. Fits good in your hand. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Be safe. Take care.